Hey, thank you, Josh. Good morning, everyone. Oh, it's great to be here today. What an outstanding story, Doug. Easter, oh my goodness. Was that just the end of March, Easter, I think? What a trend, April, April? Only a few months, what a change. A change of heart, a change of mind. But God is amazing. And you might be here today, seriously, and you're thinking, wow, how could that happen? God is a miracle worker. He can do all things and He cares and He loves about every person, every person here today. So my welcome goes to you if you're visiting today and also out online, like, how you going? Like last week, you might have seen me talking to you, like still talk, like I'm gonna get on there afterwards and talk to you back. So so yeah, like, like I just love it that we, we take this time. We love to see, like he, Doug talked about how he got baptized in water, but he talked about how he got baptized with fire, which is the Holy Spirit. And we always take a moment in our service to let the Holy Spirit speak. And sometimes he, he'll show me pictures or scriptures for certain people. And like today, I just wanna to pray for a few people. So like this young guy here in the pink shirt, are you one of the wolves? Like that's not a wolf as in like wolf, that's like his surname. Yes, yes. What's your name? Christian, Christian. Christian, you know, during worship, I just saw the Spirit of God on you. He loves you so much. He actually sees your heart. Do you know people have told you things that are probably contradictory to what you really are on the inside. People have spoken to you and said funny things. I'm not gonna go into it, but I, I heard some specific words that God was saying that people have spoken to you. He wants you to know that you know people see the outward appearance, people see the things that you do on the outside, but He sees your heart. And, and He wants you to know that you are gonna draw people to you, but you're gonna draw people to Him. He's placed you, He's positioned you to teach you. He's gonna teach you. He's gonna pour His Spirit into you and people are gonna be drawn to you. And they're gonna wonder like, what is going on with this guy? He's so amazing. And you are, Christian. You're an amazing young man. But people are gonna see God in you and you're gonna share Him. You're gonna share His good news. You're gonna share His ways and people are gonna come and get transformed because you spoke to them. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, the Christian. Actually, Darren Trinder, D Darren and Janelle, I had a picture uh, just, just before of the two of you in a rowboat and you're side by side and you're rowing and you know how when you row in a rowboat, yeah, I'm doing my rowboat now, like you're going backwards, right? You can't actually see what's in front of you, but, like you, but I've seen like this rowboat, it's had some like massive waves come, but you've still stood together, you know, and, and, you've, and you've maneuvered. And there's been some things that you've really had to manoeuvre in your family and in your finances. But I see now you're actually on like, um, how do I say it? Not shallow, like still water. Like, you, you, you know, it's very, very calm. And I also see it's like your seats are turning around to the front. So even though the boat is still going forward, you're actually looking now where you're going. And I just believe that God wants you to know, yep, you've been through some rough times, but do you know what? I did have your back, but now I'm turning you around so that you can see where you're going because I've got a plan for you, He says, a plan to prosper you, a plan that you've always dreamed about, but I want you to see it as you go ahead. And I just feel the, the Spirit of God coming behind you now in that boat. And yes, you're rowing still, but you're rowing like this because you're going forward. But I see His Spirit starting to push that boat along. And it's got this like motor on it now and it's going faster and faster, but it's the speed that it will go out because the Spirit of God is with you. So be ready, be prepared, just keep on moving. Don't let anything stop you. You know, I just think like God wants to bless your marriage. He wants to bless your family. He wants to bless your finances. He wants to bless every area of your life. So open your eyes wide and go with Him. In Jesus' name, bless you. Bless you. Where was someone else? Where was that young girl that was standing down here? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, can you just quickly, because I, I just really felt like, Oh, you know what, Doug? While you were up there speaking, oh, 
that was amazing because what, what it was, it was like you were speaking straight out of your heart. And you know, when you talked about when you were seven years old and you saw things that, that harmed you, I just felt like God say, do you know what? I've raised it and I've healed it. I've raised it and I've healed it. But I feel like He's doing a work in you. There are other things that you've blocked out, but He's raising it, but it's, it's gonna be gentle and it's gonna be sweet. And He just loves the way that you're pushing into Him. And, and the Word says, uh, blessed are those uh, for, who hunger for righteousness. They shall be filled. You will be blessed. You are so hungry. God is just gonna keep pouring into you. you you've got a, it's like you've like a, like a, a raptor. You know, <laughs> you just like you just you just can't get enough. You're out there. You're hungry. You're ravishing for God, and He loves that about you. God bless you, Doug. God bless you. All right. So, Eden, is it? You're a Somerville, aren't you? Oh, you know, I just really. That's, I got your surname when I was there, but I didn't know your first name. And I just felt that, like God wants to tell you that you are generationally blessed. Your family, like in the generations in your family, your parents, like, cause, like Sam and Rita are your parents, is that right? And then their parents, oh look, he's back there, bless you. Like, he's trying, like but, but it's like your parents and their parents have sown so much seed in the ground and they have prayed for your parents. They have prayed for you before you were born. Before you were born though, God, He knew you. And before you were born, He set you apart for His holy purpose. I just see rivers of living water coming out of you. The Holy Spirit is gonna speak to you and He probably already is Eden in dreams, but you're gonna get thoughts, you're gonna get impressions, you're gonna get pictures from God. Like have faith, it's Him. He's talking to you, He wants to talk to you, but you're gonna bless people around you by encouraging them. When you see something for someone, it's okay, tell them. As long as it's encouraging, as long as it builds them up, as long as it brings comfort, say it. God's gonna speak to you because He wants you to encourage everyone around you, but you are generationally blessed. The prayers of your forefathers, all the people who went before you will see you flourish. In the name of Jesus, God bless you, Eden. Come on, let's give God a hand. He's so good. He's amazing. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. You may take a seat. Thank you, Ben. You've been amazing. Such an awesome day. Give, the, give these guys a hand. I love it when God comes to encourage because He wants you to know how much He loves you. He wants you to know that He cares about everything about you, about the little things and about the big things. Well, you know, I was at the gym yesterday. I know, you were thinking like, What's, how'd that happen? I was, I know, don't like, like, oh, yeah, exactly. Like, that was a bit of a miracle. I've been two days in a row, like that's really a miracle. So I was at RPM, like which is a bike class, you know, you get on a bike, you don't go anywhere. But anyway, there's a screen at the front and when they first put the screen in, I thought, oh, this is awesome because, you know, while you're cycling and while you're doing this thing to music and that, you're gonna see pictures of going around roads and up hills and I'm thinking that's what it's gonna be. Nah, it's not even for that. You got all these stats up there, of these people that wear these things, you know, heart monitor things and like it's got their names like Cheeky and whatever, Skinny and Squirt and all this sort of stuff. It's got their nicknames up there and it says, it shows you, you know, their heart rate, how much calories they're, they're burning and whether they're work, working in 80% or 60% or all that sort of stuff. I mean, like seriously, I would rather have the hills and the, like, yeah, like who, want, who wants to watch that? I'm like, I'm thinking, and so yesterday, I'm sitting next to this lady next to me. She's got one of these things on. Oh my gosh. So the whole time beforehand, she's looking at it before we even start. And then we start and she's off. In between the songs, and because the music is loud, in between them, she's yelling out to the instructor because we're at the back because that's the only place I go, at the back where no one can watch me. Uh, so she yells out to the instructor like, hey, that thing's wrong. It's not right because it should be higher than that. Like, it's not working properly. I'm thinking like, get over it, seriously? 
Like by the third time, I'm like, oh, for heaven's sake, like just, just do the class, will you? Like I'm here and that's, I'm happy about that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but anyway, the whole time she's doing it. So, you know, we're getting towards the end and I look at her and go, how do you know that it's not right? Like, how do you even know that? And she goes, because I, ever since I've had this, I monitor it all the time. Every class that I've done, I know when I'm going to be at 60%. I know when I'm going to, whether it's this class or another class or that. I really know it. I know it. And, and the whole time I'm thinking, yeah, well, yeah whatever. <laughs> I'm still thinking like, yeah. So anyway, afterwards, they go out. And she was right. There was something wrong with all the monitors that were on that screen that day. I'm thinking like, what the heck? I'm like, can you believe that? But, it, it, but to me, I just thought, oh my gosh. She actually knows because she monitors her heart so in this thing, with this thing on, everything. She, she actually does know the condition of her heart better than anyone else. And I thought, oh my gosh. I mean, you know, that's what we're talking about, matters of the heart. She knows her physical heart. And I thought, wow. But I started to think, you know your physical heart, but do you actually know the condition of your spiritual heart? Whoa, I know. You, see, you know, your physical heart, which is pretty amazing, it's a miracle, like you all have one, that's why you're here today, uh, and, and also you out online there. Like a physical heart, it's an organ that pumps blood, right? It circulates the blood and provides oxygen and energy to all of your cells. You know your heart beats about 100,000 times a day? Woo, that's a lot of times. I mean, if you, if you put your little fingers up there, you can feel it. It's incredible, isn't it? Like, you, you know, you've got a pulse as well. So 35 million times a year, your heart beats. Without it, you're not here. So it's a very important organ, but in the Bible, like the word heart is mentioned over 700 times, depending on the version, some, or nearly a thousand in some versions. And almost all of these refer to our spiritual heart. And when it's talked about your heart, it sort of overlaps with words like your spirit, your mind, and your soul. But overall, the heart in the Bible is the seat of our inner nature. It's our emotions and desires that drive our behavior and make up the real person that we are. So, you know, things come into our heart and all of the issues of life come out of our hearts. Like in Proverbs 4.23, it says, guard your heart above all else. Like it says, above all else, guard your heart. I mean, I'm thinking that that's fairly important for it determines the course of your life. In Proverbs 27.19, it says, as water reflects the face, you know, when you're looking in a puddle, reflects your face, so one's life reflects the heart. Now, we spend a lot of the time like checking out our face, right? Like, think about it. This morning, how many times did you look in the mirror? Did anyone here today not look in the mirror? Don't put your hand up because that's probably not a good thing. Oh, no, 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 no. But that's what I'm saying. Like, we do. We, we, we look at our we look at our face, we brush our teeth, we look at while well, we're brushing our teeth, you know, while we're combing our hair, if we comb it or brush it or, I don't know, chamois it for some of us, like, sham, like whatever it is, but, but we usually shine it, sorry, Jeremy, shine our head, that's right, but we normally look in a mirror when we do that. So we, we constantly check things. We check our clothes out, we check that they're straight. Before I got up here, I, I checked that my, um, my zip was up because that's a good thought, right? So, you know, we, we, we check all these things physically. We do that. But how often do we actually check the condition of our heart? Like, when I, when I thought about that, I thought, wow, not often. Like, I, I'm just myself, I'm thinking that. Like, like, your heart's, your condition depends on things that you allow into them. Like, these things shape your attitude. They shape the deepest part of your being. But if wrong things go into your heart, and they go in unattended, they become deeply rooted and harder to deal with. So the quicker you detect a wrong thing in there and get it out, the better off you are. I think about when, like, I've lived in my house for 16 years now and, and built it, put the garden in. I remember the garden going in, and, and because it's over the pool, I wanted all miniature palms. You know, you can get, like, dwarf 
this and dwarf that, and they don't grow too high, that, so the leaves don't go, I mean, very strategic, right? You don't want stuff in your pool because it just like causes all that. So we get that, and then one day, a couple of years later, I noticed that there's this palm like, like growing out. I thought, I don't remember buying that because I would never have bought it. It was a fan palm. I don't like fan palms because they've got these like humongous prickly things on them and they like, they could poke your eye and kill you. Like it's just, I just don't, I don't like them. So I, I would not have, I would have not have got that. And it was small at the time and I thought, should get that sucker out. But I didn't. That's right. So 14 years later, <laughs> this palm tree is like huge. It's the, it's the biggest thing and it's ta overtaking everything. And when its leaves drop, they drop too high. So you've got to like get a ladder to get up there to, to get them down. It's such a nuisance and it's ugly. Seriously, it is so ugly. I don't like it. So what ends up, I finally, I still leave it there for probably another six months. I think this thing's got to come out. So now I've got to hire someone to come and pull it out. And it cost a lot of money. It took them ages. They had a chainsaw. They had all sorts of, it was massive. But that's what happens if you don't attend to what's going on in your heart. Get it early, it's easy to yank it out. Get it late, whoop, takes a bit of time. It sure does. It's like when you decide that you want to clean out the garden shed or want to clean out a cupboard that you haven't been in for ages. You know, the minute you start, you'd be surprised what you're gonna find in there. Oh my gosh, I know, I won't talk about what, when I cleaned out the garden shed, but, but that's what happens. You don't know what's gonna be in there if you haven't looked in there for a long time. So especially hidden wounds, like they're memories that cause pain. That's why I think sometimes, I mean, I thought myself, I don't wanna go there. I don't want that pain. Because as Doug said, he knows what that pain was like then. Who wants to bring that up? You don't want to bring it up. However, it's, it's affecting you anyway. I know, it's sad, but it's true. Thoughts that you've kept secret because they hurt. Wounds of rejection, humiliation, abandonment, or betrayal. They can even be, there can be unseen wounds of ridicule and insecurity. These wounds cannot be seen from the outside, but they fester up on the inside, you know, like with bitterness, irritation, and anger. So I know all about that. Like when I was at school, when I, um, I was born in a little town called Kouro. There's about, at the time, 8,000 people there. Went to a little school there. Happy life, happy life. Primary school was awesome. And then I moved to Wellington. It was a big school. There was over 1,000 people at the school and they were all in two grades. So it's like middle school here or junior high or whatever. And when I got there, I was like uh, one of three Māoris in our grade, like Māoris, that's what I am, one from New Zealand, Māori. So when I got there, I didn't, I wasn't used to that kind of environment, uh, especially when people started calling me blackie, uh, nigger, ugly, dirty, like unlovable. I mean, all, the, all these things, like, like, I tell you what, kids can be so mean. I don't know where, where it comes from, but I, like, you know, and poor, I mean, how'd they know I was poor? Like seriously, poor, dumb. I mean, we all had school uniforms, on, but dumb. All these things that happened over uh, a period of time and like it just crushed me. Because that's what happens when, when things like that, you get words spoken, especially when they stay there and you hear them ringing in your ear. But all of those words, they all rolled into a ball for me and all I could hear was like, I'm not good enough. So I had a couple of fights at school, but I'm not even going to go into that at this time <laughs> because I, I just, I thought, wow, what happened to me? You know, I used to be this happy kid and now I'm not happy because I was very unhappy. I felt lonely. I felt like nobody loved me at school. It was, it was, it sucked big time. Then I'll move on to a happier story. Well, actually, it's not really happy, happier. Then I went to high school in another town in New Zealand, in New Plymouth, and Fortunately for me, more Māoris at that school, so I was like, it was good, like, hey, cuz, how you going? You know, it was awesome. Had a fight the first week, but didn't have one after that. So that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Like, you know, I think it was a bit of, you know, territorial sort of thing. This person that had been there for ages, like, who are you, girl? And then she knew. <laughs> anyway, but, but what, would ha what was happening to me, 
on the inside of me, because, because I had been bullied before, I really felt for people who got bullied. And you're probably not even surprised about how much that actually happens at school, even today. Like, there's a lot of bullying. But, like, when I went to school, you know, like, there was bullying then. I don't, I don't think we called it that. I don't know what we called it, like, you know, punch-ups or whatever. But it was bullying. It was bullying. And there was a kid in my class, and he, um, I don't know how to say this, like, PC-wise, but he was, he was sort of soft, like, and... and People teased him about that. He was softly spoken. He played the piano, which when I was at school, that was not a cool thing to do. So, but he was brilliant. He was like, he'd done, gone through all the exams. We would have been 14. He was brilliant on the piano. He was very smart. You know, he was nerdish sort of thing, but like he got bullied so much. And I used to see him get bullied and I'd get this thought in my head like, man, that's just not cool. That's, I don't like that. But I would never do anything about it. Do you know, and, and anyway, one day we were in class, and he was in my maths class, and I don't even remember what actually happened. All I remember is hearing a slap and my teacher slapping him across the face. I know. Imagine if that happened these days. Jail. Like, but, 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 you know... Like, it was brutal. Like, this, he was a psycho. Like, I don't think I need to tell you that. But anyway, the, the teacher I'm talking about. So he slapped him across the face, and I think something snapped on the inside of me. I thought, you know, that's enough. Like, that, that is not cool. Like, this, he gets beaten up out in the playground, and then he's got to come in class and get slapped by a teacher. How humiliating. So he starts crying. All the boys in the class start sniggering, you know, Oh, and I am like about to blow up. Like, and I could feel myself. And if you knew me back then, which you, I mean, I'm so different now, okay? <laughs> but I just stood up and I, I looked at the teacher and went, you can't do that. There might have been a bit more color in that, but I will not for this purpose. Like, like you know, yeah, yeah, I, I will not add the color. So, you know, like, you know, you can't do that. He looks at me, throws a piece of chalk, and he goes, sit down. I'm like, no, I won't sit down. And, and I'm like, you can't do that. I'm going to go and see the principal. So he throws a chair at me. Like, so I duck. I mean, seriously, the guy was a psycho, right? But, but I was so fast, like, duck that chair, like, woo! <laughs> no problem, because I had done that before. Actually, he, 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 didn't, he, didn't, he didn't used to throw chairs. It was just mainly chalk, but I was pretty good. So anyway, so that was it. I'm, I duck the chair, I run out, I go and see the principal. And do you know, like, that boy, I mean, I didn't see that teacher much after that because I think he was gone. But, in, <laughs> but, but that boy, he came up to me and he thanked me. He said, thank you so much. Like, you know, like he, go, he goes, I felt like someone cared. I'm like, wow, which blew me away. And the only thing was that back in the playground, he still got bullied. I would see it and still do nothing. I'm like, what the hell? And the worst thing about it for me, which, because this is what happened, trauma can actually put things in your heart. Like, the worst thing about it for me is like, a few months later, he was on his bike coming to school, he got hit by a car and he died. You know, like, for me, I, I had all these plans about how I was going to go and apologize to him that I hadn't done anything on the playground. and that, I mean, he was getting bullied by boys, but you know what? Like, I really didn't care. I'd fought boys before. I could have done something. And, like, in my heart, though, was that confirmation that I'm not good enough. I couldn't even help that guy when he needed me. Like, and, and, like seriously, like that, and it was a traumatic thing. So, I mean, 14 years old. And I thought, what a crappy life, school life, he would have had. You know, like, I thought about it a lot. I've never actually spoken about it to anybody, like, like before. I think I told my son about it last night because I thought, I don't know whether to share this or not. Because it's, but, but I just want you to know that trauma, like, I didn't even know him that well, but traumatic things can put things in your heart. And, and seriously, in, in neon lights to me was, See, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. So I had that 
in me. And I, I realized that did something for me though. And um, like, you know, we write these things on, on our heart, I'm not good enough. But also it wrote on my heart at the same time, because you can have good things that are written on your heart. That if I ever saw someone getting bullied again, I would do something. I would do something. Because do you know what? When something happens to us and we know that we need to talk to somebody about it, don't leave it. Don't leave it. Just do it. Do it today. You know, I just feel like even right now, the Holy Spirit is talking to, to some of you now, that there are things in your heart that you need to apologize to someone about. Do it today. Do it today. Take the time today. I mean, I've written a letter to him, and you know, because I can't do it, but it, it took me so much longer, I think, to get over it especially because I, I wouldn't talk to anybody about it because it was a hidden thing. I don't want anyone to know about that, about how I was feeling. So, no, but that's what happens. It, it can change you on the inside, and, and that incident did change me on the inside, badly and, and, a, and also in a good way in some things. So the thing is, though, the way I dealt with it was, was always in anger, so <laughs> that may be not so good. When we first moved here, like uh, to the Sunshine Coast. I had my boys with me. They would have been probably 10 and 8. We went to, we were at the plaza, and they says, oh, can we go and get a, you know, a 30-cent ice cream at McDonald's, Mum? I'm like, yeah, yeah, go and knock yourself out, you know, give them 60 cents, like, woo, living large. So, so they, 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 they run over, and anyway, when they come back, I know there is something wrong, like, like both of them. Like, you, you know, you just know your kids. I'm thinking like, so I'm going, hey, you guys all right? Like, what, what's wrong? Oh, no, nothing, nothing, mum. I'm like, I know there's something. Like, come on, you might as well tell me, otherwise I'm, you're going to hear it like, what's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> Until you tell me. So my youngest son goes, oh, we were over there, and these boys, they were sitting there, and they were calling Nathan Blackie. Can you imagine what that did to me? <laughs> I wasn't following God at the time. No, just, to, just so that you know. Oh, it brought back memories, me my own memories of people calling me Blackie. I'm thinking like, how dare they? Seriously, I was like ropeable and wanted to probably kill someone at the time. But I'm like, right, let's go. <laughs> so, and they're like, no, mum. Because <laughs> my boys actually knew me, right? So like, no, mum, like, no, nah, we're going. I said, you're coming with me because you're going to point them out to me. Like, hello. Because you know what? I am not going to, I'm thinking, I'm doing something about this. I'm not letting it go because you know why? Because again, on my heart will be, I'm not good enough. I couldn't even stand up for my kids. Like, no way. No way. I'm not going to have that happen. So we go into McDonald's. <laughs> I'm like, where are they? And they're, they're standing like, <laughs> behind me, like over there. And like, oh my gosh, they were like four or five years older than them. I thought, you little mongrels or something. <laughs> what was that? I didn't think, oh, I'm not going to say what I thought. But I'm thinking like, how dare you? you know? So I walk over and I'm trying to control myself, <laughs> which, you know, isn't that great. But I, I walk over there and I go, hey, do you see those two boys over there? And they go like, yeah. I said, they're my sons. I says, you know, I hear that you called them something. They're like, no, no. They must have seen the look on my face. Man, I can be scary when I'm angry. Believe me, I can be scary. Right, that's right. I had a lot of practice. I'm a Maori. We do that sort of stuff, you know. But anyway, but, 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 but anyway, I, like, and I go, did you call them Blackie? Like, and they're like, no, no. And I says, I think you did. But I'm going to tell you. If one word like that ever comes out of your mouth again, <laughs> to, to, to my sons or to anybody else, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find your parents. I'm going to hunt them down. I'm going to tell them about it. I'm going to take you over to the blue beat over there. Oh, seriously, I, whatever I could be, rather than saying I'm going to kill you, because that's what I wanted to say, but I didn't. How good was that? Oh, give me a hand. That was good. <laughs> but do you know what? But there was a lesson in that for all of us, even though I didn't probably do it like that perfectly. Like when we walked out, I said to my sons, I said, do you know what? Don't ever let anybody call you something 
that you are not. Like, don't ever, don't ever. You know, don't ever listen to that because it's, I, I said, don't, like, you know, blackie, like, excuse me. And so I told them about how kids used to do that to me and how much it hurts. And I know that it can hurt, but do you know what? I love you. Like, at that time, I didn't know God, but I was thinking, I love you, I care about you, I'm for you. Like, I, I would t talk to them like that. Because at that stage, I'm thinking like, wow, I'm not going to let this happen again. So, you know, the pain from our lives, it can work in good and it can work in bad. So, and it come, can come, you know, into your heart from family relationships. It might be a broken marriage or it might be physical or sexual abuse or losing money or the way that you look or failing in business. And, and I don't know what the words you might have said to yourself or you may still say to yourself, you know, whether, like for me, it was, I'm not good enough. For you, it might be, I am inadequate, I am worthless, I am a failure, I am dirty, I'm ugly, I'm unlovable, I'm insignificant, I am defeated, I'm unwanted, I'm poor. I don't know what the word is for you, but I've got to tell you, it can come from anywhere, your workplace, your classroom, your friends, all those things, but you need to identify it. Because when you identify it, it's the only way and bring it out into the open that God can heal it for you. So, you know, in Psalm 51.10, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Just like that. When I came and had started a relationship with God, that was one of my scriptures. Create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. I knew I needed a new heart. I needed to, my heart to be clean. I needed to get all this rubbish out of it, this rubbish that, that you know, I've spoken to myself or somebody's spoken to me or someone's done to me or all that sort of stuff. I needed to get it out, get it out. I needed to clean it out and God can do that. He can do that. So if uh, there are th three things I guess um, I feel that helped me with that. And the first one is to forgive and to repent. So, you know, repentance is changing your heart. It's making a decision. It's changing your mind. It's changing your heart. And it involves turning from sin and turning to God for forgiveness. So forgiveness, you know, like in 1 John 1, 9, it says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He will. He will do that when we confess them. Confess our sins and ask God to forgive us. The Bible says he forgets our sins, that he removes them from you as far as the east is to the west. God wants us to forgive ourselves as well, to allow him to wash clean our conscience from all that we've done. Not, not just some, but all, all. So um, the other thing like, is forgiveness and, and apologize. When I became a Christian and I realized what a shocking mother I was, um, oh, it broke my heart, some of the things that I'd done to my kids. And, you know, they would have been probably 11 and 13 at the time. And I started to really learn about my heart and, and how my behavior came out of the things that I'd been through. You know, the anger, I was a very angry person. And there were so many occasions that I look back at now and I just want to cry. Like, you know, not now actually, because I've forgiven myself, but at that time when I first became a, a Christian, and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm such a terrible mother, seriously? Like, I was thinking that, and you've got to stop that because God is with you. He can help you. Don't let the enemy get on that because that, that, I was started beating myself up about it. But then God says, well, you know what you should do? Is apologize. <laughs> I know it's simple, it's simple, but not easy. I don't know why it's not easy, but for me to apologize to my kids, it was. I actually wrote everything down. I spent a bit of time on this. I prayed about it. I wrote all the things that I could remember, horrible things that I've done to them, and I, I sat them down uh, one at a time. Like I just, I asked them if I could, you know, talk to them, sat down with them one-on-one, -on -one, and I went through all the things that I was sorry about, all the things that I wanted to apologize for, and all the things that I asked them to forgive me for. 
And it was just a, a beautiful moment, actually. Like, there were so much tears. I was crying. They were crying. But they knew where my heart was, and they knew that I meant it, and they knew. And was I perfect after that? Like, hell no. I wasn't. But, but you know, the thing was, I, I apologise, and I was working my way there because it's a progress. It doesn't matter whether, you know, you've got a scab on your arm or you've got a wound on the inside. It's a process to heal. It's a process. So, but that was the beginning. But the thing that was, when I did something again, instead of like waiting for another 10 years, I'd apologize immediately and ask them to forgive me. God would bring that up. It's great. It's just an amazing. It just like lets you go. Like you feel free. It's awesome. And then the other thing is to meditate on the word of God. Pastor John talked a lot about that last week. Like in Psalm 19, 14, it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. When you meditate on the word of God, and that's what I started doing. I had little cards. I started to learn scriptures, different ones. And I would write down little confessions like, you know, with, with the I am not good enough, I used to say, but because of Christ, his grace is sufficient for me. He makes me righteous. Jesus makes me righteous. I am loved by God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God has a plan for me, a plan to prosper me. All these things, I would just start saying them over me. I would even start saying things like, you know, I am strong and courageous. I'm bold and confident in God for his glory. I am patient, loving and encouraging and add value to everyone I meet. I mean, I still say that because I'm still working on the patient part. But anyway... <laughs> But it is. But, I, but every time I hear it, I have a little giggle about the patient. But I'm getting there. I'm, I'm, well, if you saw me before, you know, I'm going. I'm going. It's a transformation. It's a process. It's a process. And then the third thing is to talk to someone. Talk to somebody about it. Yeah. Talk to somebody about your hurts. Things could have come up today. And you know you need to talk to somebody about it. If I could get the band up, please. Like, you know that you need to talk to someone about it. Someone you trust, someone that you can tell your story to. Tell it to God, yes, but talk to a friend, a leader, a pastor. You might need professional help depending on what it is. But it's okay. See, wounds heal quicker when you can find someone to pray with you. They do a lot, lot quicker. So hang around. Be around people that love you. Come to church. Join a group. Like for those of you that are new, do a, do a journey of Christianity in Alpha today. Come today at 4.45. I'm going to be there. I'm actually facilitating it today with some of our young guys here, like they're learning. So, but come today, Alpha. Do a journey with God. Because, you know, you might be here today and, and you don't have that relationship. And, and even though you don't have a relationship with God, there are things that you've heard today that you know were dropping into your mind. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. I, I didn't always have a relationship with God. Not at all. I was far from God. And I was a really angry, controlling person. But, you know, just like Doug, I knew there was something missing in my life and I didn't know what it was. And a friend of mine started going to a church. She encountered God and she encouraged me to go and find out for myself. So. I came into a church and saw people like happy and thinking like, wow, what are they doing? But during the service, I'm thinking there is something going on in these people. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Whoa, was that God? <laughs> I don't know what it is, I'm thinking. I don't know what that was either. But I'm thinking, I don't know what it is that they've got, but they've got something and I want it. And at the end, of the service, the person that was speaking offered us an opportunity to have a relationship with God. He talked about a God that loved me and accepted me just the way I was. He talked about a God that could give me a fresh start. He talked about a God that could bring peace and joy into my life. And do you know what? I wanted that. I wanted a fresh start. I wanted peace and joy. I wanted to know Him. So when He asked us to respond by raising our hands, like I put my hand up and he prayed for me. And when he prayed for me, an overwhelming peace, a peace that I had never felt before came over me. And you know what? From that day forward, my life has never been the same. 
He has been with me the whole time. And so many different things happen. I mean, today you've heard about some of them. They were just changed. He, he showed me that He could change my heart from the inside out. Because when my heart changed on the inside, my life changed on the outside. There is joy in my life. There's a joy on the inside of me that bubbles up, bubbles up, and it just spills out into every area of my life. And it really doesn't matter what my circumstances are. I know God is with me, and man, I'm excited about that. And today, I wanna give you that same opportunity to have a fresh start, to have peace, to have joy in your life. So if I could just ask you to close your eyes, spend some time talking to God, because He loves you. You might be here today and you've never had a relationship with God. And today you know that you want one. Very soon I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand. Or you may have at one time gone to a church even, but walked away. And today you know that you wanna reconnect with God and have a relationship with Him. Or you might be here and you've been coming along and something's touched your heart today and you wanna be certain, certain that you're going to heaven that you're giving Him your all, that you wanna give your full heart to God. So if you're any one of those three things, never had a relationship with God and want one, wanna reconnect with God, or you wanna be certain that you're going to heaven, right now, I want you to raise your hand up high so I can see it. Up high. Who wants to have a relationship with God? Who is there today? You know, I felt like during, while I was speaking, there's a man in the room here today that has something that came up and it had to do with what I was talking about. Someone you wanted to apologize to, but then they passed away. If that's you today, God wants you to know that He loves you with an everlasting love. If that's you today, like, and you want to accept Jesus into your life, just raise your hand. Okay, I'm looking quickly because I don't want to step past, go past this opportunity for you to have a relationship with God, a God that loves you, that can come into your life, that will walk beside you, lead you and guide you into a new life. So quickly now, I'm looking over to my left, to the centre, and over to the right. If you're online, and today you're giving your heart to God, I want you to comment on the Facebook page, and I'm going to follow you up myself. But we're going to say the prayer, just in case there's someone online. Dear Lord Jesus, all together, I come to you today and I invite you into my heart. Thank you that you love me, that I'm forgiven, that I'm washed clean. I renounce the devil and all his ways. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Show me how to live. I thank you that today I am forgiven. I am set free and I'm going to heaven. Jesus' mighty name. Father, I just thank you for every person in this room. I thank you, Lord, that right now you're working on their hearts. I thank you, Father, that today you're speaking to them. I thank you, Lord, that when people go home today, they're going to make those phone calls. They're going to see those people. They're going to do the apologies. They're going to forgive themselves. All those things, Father. They're going to start meditating on your Word. Father, I just pray your Spirit goes with them today, that you would help them that you would encourage them, that you would empower them, that you would equip them with every good thing that they need. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Amen.